So it's a nice early winter day. We're here in Ushambata, Mongolia with the beautiful and brilliant Heidi as always. <laughs> and we thought that today, do you want to start? We're going to ask people questions <laughs> about shamans. Hello and welcome. If you're new here, here's a quick and dirty summary of who I am and what this channel is about. My name is Frances and up until about nine years ago, I was playing the part of a clinical psychologist in the USA. Then I was called by the spirits and things got a little unexpected. So skipping over some years, I now spend part of my time in Mongolia where I train with shamans. Now if that sounds strange to you, believe me, it's much stranger from within this story. So this YouTube channel I created to share my experiences with everyone so we can learn from this wild journey together. I'm here today on the streets of Uthambatar, Mongolia with Heidi, my niece, my little sister, depending on what culture you're in. And we're gonna just take a random sampling and talk to <laughs> Mongolians as we can find them on the streets of the capital here and ask them what their experiences are with shamanism. Because my understanding had been that like everyone in Mongolia believes in shamans and living here, boy, is that not true. So, I'd like to, us to hear from Mongolians. What do the Mongolians think about shamans and shamanism? Do you believe in shamans? Yeah, yeah, I believe. Have you had experience? With I them? do. Yeah. Oh. My mother is shaman. Oh, has you been a shaman your whole life? Almost <laughs> twenty years, I think so. Oh, is she doing it all the time, or is it just sometimes people? Come? Uh, almost all the time. Oh. Uh, they, they all, all the time. Oh. Would you want to be a shaman? Uh, it's difficult. Uh, it's uh, difficult. Uh, the shamans, uh, their child or their child's child can be an ex-shaman. Uh, it's a traditional, like, like a chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can be a shaman if they choose me. Oh. Uh, Would you want them to choose you? <laughs> When I uh, a little boy, I want to, and uh, now I not really much. So my name is Frances, and this is my little sister Heidi, and we're asking Mongolians today about shamans. Do you believe in shamans? Shaman? What yeah. is it? Bo. 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 Bo.
During the Soviet era, anything that had even the scent of religion was heavily repressed. So that included the shamans and the Buddhists and the Buddhist shamans. Shamans largely disappeared during this time, except in some remote areas or they went underground. Over the last several decades, shamanism is coming back in Mongolia, inside the capital and outside of the capital, but not everyone knows about shamanism and not everyone is interested in talking to us about shamanism. Heidi and I had some great luck at the beginning having people speak to us, but then we were getting a lot of no's. So we decided to go over here, which is a walking area. Lots of families like to go walking, lots of activities that happen in the better weather months in front of the State Department store. Today there are lots of kids skateboarding, although the better skate park is not here, it's nearby. So how's it going? <laughs> I'm getting rejected. <laughs> I don't care. It's every single time I, I get it now, I'm like... <laughs> How many times do you think we've been rejected? Ten times. <laughs> I think it's only nine. I think it's ten. Okay, ten. Why do you think that they're... Okay, so a couple people said they don't know any... At least, I think, four so they don't know anything about shamans. Yeah. And I think some of them, we just said YouTube, and they were like, mm-mm. No video for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I said, okay. So... The ones that we do get on film <laughs> are not representative of all. What about this dude or the bucket? <laughs> I've never been rejected by a dude with a bucket before. <laughs> what did he say? He said yes. He asked where it was going to be on and I said YouTube and he's like, oh, I didn't know. I wonder why. Like, where did he think it was going to go? National Archives. <laughs> We're not there yet. <laughs> okay, now we're at 11. <laughs> but that's okay, we're not gonna give up. <laughs> They're on the phone? Okay. Nope, they said our generation, we don't know about that kind of stuff. How old do you think they are? 70. Late, mid to late 70, maybe early 80s. So that's around my grandma's age. 1992 was the end of the Soviet area and the beginning of a new Mongolia, beginning with the adoption of a new constitution. What always sits with me in a really disturbing way is that 1921 to 1992 is 71 years. This is almost exactly three generations. That's exactly enough time that I think you need to wipe out a culture's memory. So if these women are in their mid-70s, that means that they would have been born into families, especially if they were born here in Uthambatar, which is already a thriving capital, into families that could no longer talk about shamanism, even if it was something that they had been practicing before, which also means that if these women went on to raise families of their own, they would have raised children who no longer had access to information about shamans. And of course, then the cycle continues. To me, the idea of intense repression of information or practices of shamanism for 71 years or three generations is so chilling because essentially what you're doing is wiping out the memories of the elders. So for example, Heidi, who's in her early 20s, she was raised by people who had not been raised by people who knew about shamans. That may be um, a different story for people who are raised in more nomadic environments, although Heidi has connections as much as most Mongolians do to people who do live in more rural areas. Um, to me, what I see is the shamans in Mongolia today, they're picking up the pieces and moving forward uh, from a really difficult a uh, moment of mm, tremendous cultural loss. <laughs> All right, so sh maybe let's ask this next batch of people coming through, and if we get someone, we get someone. <laughs> yeah, really quickly. Okay. I'm interested in talking to Mongolians about your experiences with shamans. Do you believe in shamans? Do you know anyone in your family who like thinks they're a shaman? I think that's a story I hear from many people. So I'm asking people to 
today in Mongolia about shamanism because, of course, everything's changing so fast. Yeah. Um, do you believe in shamans? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, experience with them? Yeah, uh, my cousin is a shaman. Oh, and yeah. Um, she say they connect with the, our our ancestor. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, I visit visit them uh, sometimes. Oh, yeah. how old is she? <clears throat> um, I think she's. I don't know exactly. I think she's around, uh, around forty. Okay. Yeah. Do you, Do you think that it's been helpful for you to have a shaman in the family? Yeah. Uh, uh, our ancestor. Yeah, I believe they. Would you ever want to be a shaman? Oh, well, it's not what, what I, um, to say. It's not in my power, mm. so I can't choose. Yeah. I don't know if it's kind of overwhelming, intimidating. <laughs> I'm kind of afraid of it. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Asa. Thank, Thank you for your time. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope this has provided, through the kindness of strangers taking some time to talk with us, a quick glimpse into what it's really like in Mongolia today around topics like shamanism. Now, of course, as much as I live here, love here, grow here, and feel a part of the community here, Mongolia really does feel uh, as a home for me. I am not Mongolian. I will never be Mongolian. So I'm sharing my views with you and keep that within the context that this is what I've come to see through my unique journey. With the fall of the Soviet times in 1992, what came rushing in was the era of blue jeans and Michael Jackson here. And now you see influences like South Korean culture everywhere in the capital, outside of the capital as well. Mongolia is a country in a moment of great flux, and I worry shamanism and its potential for being in its full capacity will become washed out in this era, not just this era in Mongolia, but this era that most of us are in. Mongolians are just as much as all of us living in difficult times with pressures from an invisible hand to leave behind our rich past in pursuit of vague hollow slogans like progress. Progress to where? I don't know. We communicate with Instagram over communicating with our ancestors. Our fingertips are more familiar with touching keypads than the sensation of the earth in our hands. So in Mongolia here, many are working to preserve their culture and traditions, such as my friend with his horseback archery school, and I have a whole video about spending a day with him. I'll leave the link below. Shamans, as much as anyone else, you and me and everyone, <laughs> are living in these really complicated times. So from my time being in Mongolia, sitting with shamans, meeting shamans, primarily in Ulaanbaatar, but outside of Ulaanbaatar as well, I'm going to say something that may be a little controversial. I think the revival of shamanism in Mongolia is in its infancy and it's still very fragile. Shamans here are humans first and we're all living through complicated times. Shamans are having to pick up the pieces of organized efforts to destroy their traditions and I think probably if you're listening to this you can connect to that from experiences that you and your ancestors have also shared. I don't want to end on a down note. Something beautiful I see from living my unusual life here in Mongolia, and I live in other uh, cu cultures as well. What I've come to think is really there's no one who knows you more than you. You don't need a Mongolian shaman to know yourself, and you don't need a shaman to unlock the power and wisdom that is right there inside of you right now as you watch this YouTube video. You can find it within yourself. Okay, yes, I do think maybe sometimes it's helpful to know a shaman, but really, really jokes aside, you don't need one. What you need to start your own journey is sitting right next to you, right now. Slow down, look again. You're not alone. The universe is really all around and within you. And you know, some of us didn't have really strong ancestors. So it doesn't have to be your ancestors who are there helping and guiding you. The universe always meets you where you are. 
It takes all of us returning to the sacred within ourselves to rebuild the cultures that all of us have lost. Thank you so much for spending some time here. If this was of any interest to you, feel free to like and subscribe. Of course, that would be fantastic, but if not, no big deal. Catch you somewhere else. Thanks. Bye-bye.